Your Seattle Mariners are all alone in first place in the American League West. Ben and I will give you our thoughts on the Mariners' 3-2 victory over the Royals coming up here on the Locked On Mariners postgame show. Let's get into it. You are Locked On Mariners, your daily Seattle Mariners podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Ahoy, sailors. It is Sunday, August 27th, 2023. This is Tidding as and Ben Ranieri for the Locked On Mariners postgame show. Thank you so much for making us your first listen. Subscribe, like, and turn on alerts if you're watching on YouTube, or subscribe and leave a five-star review on your preferred podcast platform if you like what you hear. And if you're part of the crew and rock with us every single day, let us know in the comments below. And if you want to hear from us even more, please consider signing up for our Patreon. You now get a free seven-day trial to check out the show. The link, as well as our social accounts, is in the description of this episode. Three to two, the final score from T-Mobile Park. Mariners sweep the Royals. And on top of that, the Rangers lost to the Twins in extra innings, which means your Seattle Mariners are in sole possession of first place in the American League West, folks. That's right. That is right. I've got Ben Ranieri of Sea level back with me today with Colby out of town. Ben, the scenes at T-Mobile Park were electric this afternoon. Before we get into the uh, meat and potatoes of this one, give us your initial reaction to today. Yeah, it's just awesome, man. Like I said last time, Seattle's been a sleeping baseball giant for a long time, and it's so cool to see him get 38,000 people on a Sunday with that much on the line. Um, you could kind of see as they were panning across, and from the people that I knew that were at the games, people were watching the Twins game on their phone, which is pretty cool. Like, that's what you want to see in, in August baseball. It means it's meaningful. Um, and it's just really cool to see Seattle show out like that. Yeah. I admittedly uh, was paying way more attention to the blue Jays and Rangers games through the first half of this Mariners game than the actual Mariners game itself. Uh, <laughs> and and yeah, that's weird. Right. Because, as well. Yeah. Shout out to the guardians. The Mariners now have a four game buffer essentially of completely falling out of the playoff race now. Uh, so that's massive. And and that's wild that, you know, I was more so paying attention to those other two games uh, because this Mariners game was incredibly close. It was one nothing for most of it until Julio hit a two run bomb uh, to make it three nothing. And then they were pretty much cruising until uh, Gabe Spire gave up a two run home run to Nelson Velasquez. And then there was more danger there. Things got really dusty. Uh, runners at first and third with Salvador Perez. Uh, up to bat and then it was second and third after uh, Bobby Witt stole second base and so a single likely would have made it 4-3 Royals but Justin Topa threw a nasty changeup the only changeup he threw all day to uh, Salvador Perez and uh, got him for strike three and then Andres Munoz came through he looked really good this is a pretty easy ninth inning, very electric ninth inning. Shout out to Dave Sims, who once again in the big moment just kills it. Absolutely he kills miss. it. He does not miss in those moments. It's insane. He was awesome as well. Uh, I want to talk about Luis Castillo because without Luis Castillo being as good as he was, uh, this might not have gone as well for the Mariners today. He goes seven scoreless innings, six strikeouts, just one walk, just one hit allowed i think of just four hard hit balls maybe five hard hit balls uh what did you think about his day yeah he was basically a, a three pitch guy today uh fastball two seam slider um and he had awesome awesome command today we talked about how the royals just don't swing in this a lot mm -hmm. um i thought this was his probably his best outing of the year like where he wasn't really pitching like a power pitcher like mm -hmm. i think he had six six strikeouts um he was consistently on the edges all game. Um, and when he gets in trouble, he's in the middle of the plate a lot with the slider specifically or the changeup specifically. Um, and he just kind of stuck with his bread and butter. It was fastball, two seam, um, dotting the corners. And Scott Service was just talking about it on the, the post game interview, but it just never seems like he breaks a sweat. Um, He's the same guy all the time, whether it's going really good or really bad. And that's, he's the rock. Like that's exactly what you want at the top of your mm -hmm. rotation. 
Yeah, got to give one of these here for for Luis. That was a great performance today. Um, and not without some uh, help from his defense as well. I got to give a shout out to Dom Canzone. You know, I've I've been right. ragging on Dom Canzone a little bit on this show the last. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. I've been uh, ragging on Dom Canzone's a- athleticism the last couple of shows. Uh, he made a pretty spectacular diving play out in right field. Um, it was apparently a bad route according to Ryan Divish, but he yeah. recovered nicely Ooh, and. Yeah so you know it's it's, it's it cool. was a it was a bad start and a really really impressive recovery i mean that yeah we're, we talked the other day about how eh, he may not be that athletic but that was a really really athletic play after a, a bad read yeah. off the start i don't know i mean who knows it was probably a really difficult ball um but just a phenomenal play yeah yeah it still takes a, a good athlete to uh to make that catch for sure to make that recovery <laughs> and then gino suarez man what what else can you say about this guy he should be the gold glove right yep um exactly something that i wanted to get into he scott service just said um he thought that was the biggest play of the game uh to get that first out in the eighth inning uh mm-hmm. it was a ball off of a lefty's bat going away from him um diving stop gets the runner at second base like uh, it's coming up on my Twitter account all the time. Give this guy the gold glove. He has been so good, and for whatever he hasn't really done offensively this year, he's been okay. Um, but, man, he makes so many plays that keep them in, yeah. in these games, especially with how many sinker ballers they have now on this team and how many are coming up. It's so important that their infield defense is good. And Gino's got my vote, and he should have everybody's vote for third base gold glove. Yeah, to eliminate Blanco on the base pass too was massive because that dude can jet. So, yeah, that was just a huge, huge play. Uh, and they nearly turned the double play there too, which uh, would have made things a lot less interesting there in the eighth. But, uh, but yeah, nevertheless, Topa able to uh, clean up uh, Spire's mess. And Spire's obviously been really good as of late. So, you know, we'll, we'll let that one slide. But, uh, yeah, man. Huge win today for the Mariners. We're going to talk more about it in just a moment. But first, a reminder, this episode of the Locked On Mariners podcast is brought to you by Dave. No, not Sims or Niehaus. Dave is the banking app that's leaving the financial field. At one time or another, we've all needed a little financial help. That's why Dave is great. Dave can get you cash between paychecks and can help you build credit by settling extra cash advances on time. When you download Dave, you can get up to $500 in five minutes or less. No credit check, no late fees. It's part of Dave's extra cash account. Advance the money you need with no interest and then settle up later. So if you're in a pinch, get the help you need by downloading Dave. Download Dave today at dave.com slash MLB. Terms and conditions, go to dave.com slash legal. Eligibility criteria and instant transfer fees apply. Banking services provided by Evolve member FDIC. That's dave.com slash MLB. You could get up to $500 in five minutes or less. No credit check, no late fees. Download the Dave app now or go to dave.com slash MLB. And you're listening to the Locked On Mariners postgame show. Thank you so much for making us your first listen here after the Mariners 3-2 victory over the Kansas City Royals, which puts them in sole possession of first place in the American League West here on August 27th, 2023. Incredible stuff. The Mariners going to face the A's coming up here. You can catch all the action on the Mariners' hometown broadcast with SiriusXM via the SXM app. Uh, So, Ben, Julio and Teo doing all the work here for the uh, Mariners' offense. was kind of a disappointing day for the offense. I thought they rolled out the best possible lineup they can right now. Uh, And they ended up only scoring three runs and both and all three of those runs came on two swings of the bat, one from Teoscar Hernandez and one from Julio Rodriguez with the two run shot. Uh, Teo is red hot right now. Uh, And that's, that's huge, right? Like that's massive for this team. Yeah. I mean, those are the two guys coming into the year that we kind of thought could be aircraft carriers for this offense and we didn't really see it for most of the year which probably coincides with why this offense wasn't that great or was kind of middling until you know this last month um julio's got a 209 wrc plus in august ridiculous he's going to be the american league player of the month yeah yeah uh it's pretty safe to say Um, yeah but has got a 178 in august so i mean it's pretty easy to see why this team has been so hot um those guys have been carrying the load and 
it was basically just those two doing the job today. Um, yeah. Julio continues to pull the ball in the air, which is something that I've been talking about um, with him for a long time. I did a, a long, longer piece on that with uh, actually J.P. Crawford's hitting coach. It's like this guy can hit 40 home runs every year if he just pulls it in the air. He hits the ball so hard. Um, and whatever adjustment he made with uh, Jared DeHart, it's made a huge difference. Shout out to Jared DeHart, who uh, Josh Rojas has attributed to uh, for a lot of his success lately. Um, I want to talk about that a little bit here because, uh, you know, Rojas made some more comments uh, after the game yesterday about what he and DeHart have done. And, you know, this is a testament to to the Mariners and what they've been able to do with a lot of these players that they've targeted that are struggling at the time that they've targeted them and, and ended up trading for them. And that's that they actually have a plan in place before they even get these guys in right they're not just looking at buy low opportunities on guys with a lot of talent and just figuring it out from there it's they're identifying hey what can we do with this guy and this has been more so the case on the pitching front uh but what do you think about what they've been able to do with rojas and just their process with how they've um identified these guys like him yeah it's been super interesting for both of those guys um i know rojas kind of talked about in that clip how you want to be able to to pull the fastball without cheating it. And in an interview with um, Nick Swisher, I believe it was, after the game on Peacock, Dominic Canzone said the exact same thing. Mm-hmm. Um, it's trying to get to your pull side in the air. You're staying on the fastball. And it's it's really working. I mean, that's that's what you got to do. This team wasn't this team hadn't been hitting fastballs all year, pretty much, if, if you yeah. kind of go back and look at it until about July. And um, not that many people were talking about it. And it's it's something that's kind of niche. If Maybe if you haven't played a lot of baseball or you haven't, um, if you don't really pay attention to that side of it, but you need to be on the fastball to be on everything else because then you just end up in between and there's soft contact and you get jammed. And we're seeing it with Julio um, getting to his pull side, able to pull fastballs. Um, and since Canzone's been hot, a lot of the balls he's been hitting have been pull side in the air and then he'll, shooting off speed the other way. Um, so I, I love it. Um, shout out to Jared DeHart and, and the Mariners player development staff at the big league level, just really getting these guys dialed in. Speaking of Canzone, he could have easily had an RBI double, but Ty France is incredibly slow. <laughs> incredibly yeah. slow. Uh, now, they showed on the replay, you know, they did review it, and it looked yeah. on the replay that he did get his hand in there before the tag was applied, but they ended up saying that it stood what did you think about that whole thing i think it's just one of those things where the call on the field stands like it's it's just yeah i don't know i don't, I don't know, know if that's evidence. what they, they said but there's just not enough yeah evidence it was in those situations and, yeah. and you can you can kind of see um where there's some gray area like did he maybe graze his hand probably not but um i i understand why they made that call i, I kind of thought after the first two times i saw the replay that that was probably going to be the result uh, so Ben, before we move on here, um, you kind of reintroduced your uh, yourself to the Locked On Mariners uh, community here. Uh, but for those that that missed out on Friday, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and, and what you got going on. Yeah, so you can go ahead and follow me over at on Twitter uh, or X or whatever it's called uh, at Ben Renary Ten, um, and then you can go subscribe to my Substack. Um, it's clevelbr.com um you can do a free subscription or if you're feeling generous um you can get access to all my content uh with a paid subscription so go ahead and go over there and check it out i got a bunch of cool features um one with pitching ninja i got some features with sam Haggerty, um ty pete um a bunch of different guys riley o'brien kate marlowe so go ahead and yeah kate marlowe which is a really good one that i had some fun writing mm-hmm. so um go ahead and go over there and check that out really appreciate it. yeah definitely check him out uh ben's a great follow over on twitter and on his sub stack you definitely definitely want to go uh give that a look uh colby is going to be back tomorrow for mailbag monday we're going to put out a tweet over on twitter so if you have questions uh send them on over there and uh we're definitely going to have to get Ben back on the show as well. I really appreciate you uh, hopping on here while uh, Colby's out of town this weekend. All right. So we're going to be talking about what uh, happened around the league that benefited the Mariners today. It was a pretty good day. The Astros 
won, but the Rangers and the Blue Jays lost. So we're going to go over that in just a moment. But first, a reminder, this episode of the Locked On Mariners postgame show is brought to you by Sleeper. Want the chance to win more money with less picks? Head to Sleeper where you can win up to 100 times your money on just two or more fantasy baseball picks. All you have to do is choose two or more players that you like and select more or less on their stats like home runs, strikeouts, hits, and more. Get your picks right and you can win big. Making your picks is easy and takes only 30 seconds or less. And if you win, you can withdraw your payouts safe and quickly. Use promo code Locked On. that's L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N, You'll get up to $100 matched on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. See Sleeper's terms of use for details. Currently operational in over 30 states. Check out Sleeper today. Do it. You're listening to the Lockdown Mariners postgame show. Thank you again for making us your first listen after the Mariners 3-2 victory over the Kansas City Royals. That is the first place Seattle Mariners, folks. First place Seattle Mariners. Not tied for first. No sole possession of first place that's Full because game. that's right that's right and that's because the texas rangers blew a five nothing lead in minnesota this afternoon uh the twins tied it up five five in the uh ninth Rollis chapman uh blew the save i read somewhere that i i think the the rangers are like 24 of 48 in save opportunities yeah, this year i saw that that's crazy. Uh, that bullpen's in a, in a dark spot. Uh, Jonathan Hernandez ends up walking in the game-winning run in the 13th inning. That's right. They got all the way into the 13th inning. And again, I was mostly focused on this game and the Blue Jays game during the Mariners game. So I watched a good amount of this. And the Twins did not want to win this game. But thankfully, the Rangers also did not want to win this game. And, and that's uh, the same Jonathan Hernandez that the Mariners traded for Justin Topa? No, 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 no. Joseph Different? Fernandez. Joseph, Joseph Fernandez. Fernandez. Okay. Joseph okay. Fernandez. Yeah, it's okay. Joseph Fernandez. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I was trying to remember that who they traded. Elite. Yeah, I was like, wow, that would have been Jerry's playing 7D uh, chess yeah. right now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so that game was insane, right? The Rangers didn't score in the top of the 10th. Twins had a prime opportunity to walk it off. They didn't even move the runner over to third. In fact, it took them until the 12th inning to move a runner over to third. Not even score. Move a runner over to third. I think they had like seven outs before they moved a runner over to third. Thankfully, uh, they were able to tie it after the Rangers took a 6-5 to five lead in the top of the 12th. And then, once again, they were able to keep the Rangers scoreless in the 13th. And... It looked like they were going to mess it up again. They had a prime opportunity to walk it off. They weren't able to move the runner up to third until they had two outs because Hernandez walked three straight batters. Yeah, it wasn't anything the, the twins did themselves. It was just terrible control from Hernandez. And the we'll twins win. And so this feels like a vibes killer for the Rangers. I mean, they just lost eight in a row. They finally ended that losing streak yesterday with a pretty convincing win feel good win and then they got off to a five nothing lead today and it was like all right we're back but then they blow that lead they go 13 innings deep they basically deplete their entire bullpen and they lose like that's hard to recover from mentally if you're a ball club given everything that's happened leading up today to today so my question to you is this should we be more worried about the Astros than the Rangers right now? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I've been saying that all year long. The Astros, I've never really wavered off my my pick of the Astros. Um, I, I thought they were going to win the division most of the year. I think, I mean, they know how to win. They got Verlander back. Like, that's going to be a really tough team. We know that. Um, yep. We know they were going to be a roadblock. And we've known that the Rangers have a good offense. But we've also known but they have some cracks. Um, that bullpen and that pitching staff is kind of shaky. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. So we've known that they have cracks, and that's a really, really deflating way to lose um, over and over and over again when your bullpen can't hold leads. It's stressful on your offense, um, and it's not very sustainable. You need to be able to close games out. Um, you need yeah. to be able to keep games where they're at. And So, yeah, I definitely think the Houston Astros are the – better of those two teams but all three of these teams seem to be fairly evenly matched 
Yeah, they're pretty much in line with one another. So we'll we'll see how it all comes together here. But the Rangers have to stop the bleeding here. It is snowballing, and it is snowballing bad. And if they continue to let the snowball, I mean, they're gonna have to be fighting for the wild card at that point. Like they they're in a dark place right now. They're in a dark place. I'm not ready to say that that it's over for them, but they gotta get it together. They gotta get it together and yeah. quick because they are running out of time here. Uh all right. So on uh b- up north, back in my neck of the woods here in Toronto, uh the Blue Jays. Uh, lost a back and forth game with the Cleveland Guardians. The Guardians ended up putting up four runs in the 11th because, like the Twins, they did not score in the 10th, but the Blue Jays also did not score in the 10th. So they were able to survive that. And uh, yeah, they went off a little bit in the 11th and end up winning 10 to 7. So now that essentially gives the Mariners a four game buffer. Uh, with the Blue Jays and essentially gives them a four game buffer from just falling out of the playoff picture entirely, which is amazing if they can sustain that or make that even larger Mariners I'm talking about here uh, over the next few weeks because once you get into that gauntlet of the Rangers Astros and then Rangers again before the end of the season if there's less of a chance of you just completely falling out of it I mean I I think that takes a lot of pressure off of you right I mean you still want to win the division but you're mostly like those series might just be for seeding rather than your playoff live. So the other thing here too, right, is Bo Bichette left today's game with uh, quad tightness. I didn't see that. Yeah, he left in the in the sixth inning with quad tightness. Obviously, he's been dealing with that knee injury. He came back pretty quick after the knee injury. So uh, it doesn't seem like it's anything with that in particular, but still, he's he's hurt again. So we'll see how that goes. Matt Chapman also left this game. I don't know what he wow. left with, but he also exited this game. Kevin Biggio took over at third. So if those guys miss an extended period of time and they're scuffling right now in general, I mean, that would be, again, that would be huge if you really don't even have to worry about the Blue Jays. Now, obviously, the Red Sox aren't going away either, so maybe they factor into this thing a little bit here. But, uh, yeah, the, the things are looking up Mariners right now is pretty much what, I, what yeah. I'm saying here. And it's really good that the, the Mariners are able to create a little bit of that buffer that you're talking about too because the Blue Jays are going to run into kind of a similar stretch of teams that the Mariners are playing right now. Um, yeah. Their schedule is pretty soft the rest of the way. Um, and, you know, if you create that buffer and you keep playing well, you're going to have a better chance to end up on the right side of it at the end, um, especially if they have some of those important guys missing some time. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Anything else you want to add before we get on out of here, Ben? Yeah, one more thing. Um, shout out to Andres Munoz today. Yeah. Uh, he's been having a really, really rough go of it. And I just kind of wanted to talk a little bit about him. Um, sometimes as a leverage guy, you kind of just need to remember, and a guy like Munoz, you kind of just seem to remember that you're in control. Um, and he's got probably some of the best stuff on the planet. Um, and he just threw it right down the middle today over and over and over again. Yeah. Um, sometimes you just need to remember how dominant your stuff is. Stop nibbling and just kind of throw it down their throats and see what happens. Um, so it's really, really valuable and, and important to see him kind of gain some confidence back today. So that was another huge takeaway that I had today as well mm-hmm. as Justin Topa. Um, just continuing to be awesome like you mentioned earlier with the change up in that situation like how impressive it is to throw a change up and for cal to call a change up um in that situation to just throw a beauty um was so awesome to see so yeah uh, big shout out to the bullpen those leverage guys getting it done ben want to thank you again for hopping on here uh while colby's been out of town uh guys Absolutely. show ben some love down in the comments below show him some love over on twitter give him a follow over on twitter at ben ranieri 10 and uh give his uh sub a look as well over at clevelbr.com uh that's gonna do it for our show thank you so much for joining us here on the locked on mariners post game show ben ranieri i'm tight and gonzalez be sure to give us a follow on twitter at lo underscore mariners you can follow me at dan gonzalez it's d-a-n-e-g-n-z-l-z and my co-host colby patnode over at cpat11 at c-p-a-t-1-1 you can also follow us on instagram and tiktok as well at locked on mariners that's one word locked on mariners 
can also find all that stuff in the description of this episode. Thank you again for making us your first listen after the game. Again, you can catch the Mariners and the Athletics this week on the Mariners Hometown Broadcast with SiriusXM via the SXM app. Have yourself a beautiful baseball day, and we'll see you next time. Peace.